Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to security assessment and testing in Domain 4 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the third of seven videos for Domain 4. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a small part of our complete CCSP masterclass. Our systems are becoming ever more complex. We're collecting more data, gathering more insights, rapidly making decisions. These systems are integral to the success of business. So what then is the purpose of security assessment and testing? To ensure that security requirements and controls are defined, tested, and operating effectively to support the business in achieving its goals and objectives. When should security become involved in testing? Security assessment and testing covers the entire validation of business requirements, definition of controls, development of new applications and systems, the ongoing operation, and the eventual retirement and disposal. So a good way to summarize that is that testing should be involved from the start and throughout the entire system lifecycle. In today's world, no business is going to be successful if they don't have systems that provide a sufficient degree of confidentiality, integrity, availability, if the systems aren't working properly. If the systems aren't working properly and providing the requisite security. So this is why security assessment and testing is so important. We'll start this mind map with validation. Validation is all about gathering business requirements to truly understand what the business needs are and then validating those requirements with the business or with the relevant stakeholders. Validation is basically saying, I heard you say these requirements. Did I capture that correctly? Did I miss anything? Validating that you've understood the business requirements. Verification is all the testing we perform once we start designing, architecting, and building the actual system. We verify the controls are properly designed and baked into the system. That's all the verification. Verification is the vast majority of the testing. Uh, we can invest very little effort in testing, or we can invest a lot of effort in testing. What drives us to perform more or less testing to have a greater confidence in the system is what exactly? The value of the system to the organization. The more valuable the system, the more effort we'll invest in testing to make sure the system is effectively supporting the business and achieving its goals and objectives. There are various techniques that we can apply to perform our testing. And note that these techniques can be mixed and matched together to perform different types of tests. They're not mutually exclusive. All right, so there's two main methods we can use to perform testing. Manual involves hands-on keyboard, a person manually reading code or performing some action on a running program. Hands-on keyboard. Automated implies that we use an automated tool, software to test other software. For example, code scanning tools or vulnerability scanners. Runtime is all about whether the code is running or not. Static testing is testing on a system that is not running. Static testing, therefore, is looking at code. Dynamic testing means the software is running. So you're testing a running system. Fuzz testing is a form of dynamic testing. It's essentially the idea that programmers are logical people. They expect logical input and provide logical output. If you throw chaos at a system, massive amounts of random data, then you can identify all sorts of unexpected errors and vulnerabilities in code. That's fuzz testing. Interactive application security testing involves a combination of both static and dynamic. Testing is performed as the application is running, dynamic, with access to the source code, static. IAST, these interactive tools, are typically integrated into the software as agents or sensors to monitor the application in real time. We can think about testing based on whether or not we have access to the code. White box means you do have access to the source code for your testing. Black box means you can't see the underlying code. You're testing a running application and the internal workings are a black box invisible to you. Software composition analysis is an automated process that identifies open source software in a code base. Uh, this can be a useful insight into the quality of the code, help us evaluate the security and check that the license are being properly complied with. So just remember software composition analysis is, allows you to identify to what degree open source software is used in the code base. Every system has vulnerabilities. 
vulnerability assessment and pen testing are an important part of testing a system to look for these vulnerabilities, to identify, classify, and prioritize remediation activities. Vulnerability assessments and penetration tests are very similar and start out the same way, identifying potential vulnerabilities and reporting on them to understand the potential impact of the organization and prioritize remediation. So they share a lot in common. In a vulnerability assessment, though, once a potential vulnerability has been identified, you're going to skip straight to reporting. In a pay penetration test, however, we identify potential vulnerabilities, and then we attempt to actually exploit them. So that's the big difference. In a vulnerability assessment, you're just looking for potential vulnerabilities. In a pen test, you're actually trying to exploit the vulnerabilities to verify if the vulnerability truly exists and can be exploited, and thus eliminating false positives. Vulnerability assessments tend to be a lot faster and more automated, but generate a lot more false positives. Penetration tests are slower and more manual and have a much higher likelihood of negatively impacting a system, but they do provide a much clearer picture of the security of a system. So there's obviously pros and cons to each. Here's the process we go through to conduct vulnerability assessments and pen tests. We start with reconnaissance, which is a passive activity. The organization being assessed cannot detect that anything is happening. That, that's what we mean by passive, as this step is about gathering publicly available information from sources like job postings, LinkedIn profiles, and DNS records. So that's reconnaissance. Enumeration is an active activity. This step can, can be detected by the organization. We're enumerating systematically walking through IP address ranges and ports to look for live systems that are offering services. Vulnerability analysis is where we determine the exact version of a system and identify potential vulnerabilities that could be exploited. We'll talk about banner grabbing and fingerprinting uh, and how they can be used to identify the version of a system in just a few minutes. Execution is, if we're performing a vulnerability assessment, we are gonna skip this step and we'll go straight to reporting. But if we're performing a pen test, the execution step is where we attempt to exploit any vulnerabilities we've identified, actually break into the system. So execution is only performed for pen tests and it's about trying to exploit any identified vulnerabilities. And then documenting findings is obviously about reporting on vulnerabilities identified, the potential impact of the organization and prioritization and, and tailoring these reports to the appropriate audiences. When it comes to text testing, there are a wide variety of different techniques which can be divided into some separate approaches here. First thing to think about is perspective where the hacker is performing the test from. Internal means the testing is performed from within the organization's network, seemingly the attacker is inside the network. External means the testing is being performed from outside the organization's network, seemingly the attacker is outside the firewall, typically out on the internet. Another approach to testing is blind versus double blind. Blind testing involves the assessor being given little or no information about the target. However, the target's IT and security teams will generally know the test is coming. So blind testing simply means you don't give the assessor really any information. Double blind means not only do we not give the assessor, the, the ethical hacker, any information, we also don't tell the organization's security operations team that the simulated attack breach is occurring. So double blind tests not only whether the attacker can get in, but also how effectively the organization can detect and respond to the attack. Knowledge is all about how much information is given to the ethical hacker. In zero knowledge or black box testing, the tester is given zero knowledge on the system and must rely on publicly available information and whatever they can deduce. This simulates an outsider trying to break in. Zero knowledge and blind, by the way, are the same thing. So zero knowledge test, black box test, and blind test, all the same thing. You don't really give the assessor any information. In partial knowledge or gray box testing, the tester is given the knowledge of a user, uh, maybe a guest account, um, potentially even some elevated privileges on the system and some basic information. The whole reason for doing this is to make the testing more efficient. So the assessor doesn't have to spend a bunch of their time just figuring out the basics. They can focus on the more interesting parts of their testing. Now listen carefully here. Full knowledge, white box or open box, sometimes clear box testing, is where the testers are given full access to first source code full credentials, full administrative rights to the system, and detailed architectural documentation. White box testing is much more focused on going through the source code of a system in detail. 
Now, there's a couple different types of scans we can perform with vulnerability assessments with tools like Nessus and Rapid7 and others. A credential or authenticated scan is where we give the scanning tool the credentials necessary to log into the system or systems being scanned. A credentialed scan can take a deeper look into the exact configuration of a system and thus help to eliminate false positives and also help with things like baseline compliance and so forth. An uncredentialed scan, as you can probably guess, means we don't give the scanning tool the credentials necessary to log in. This is more of a simulation of an external attacker and what vulnerabilities can be identified from outside the system without the ability to log into it. A critical requirement in identifying vulnerabilities in systems is knowing the exact version of the operating system and applications that are running. The reason, of course, is that different versions of software have different vulnerabilities. So let's talk about two different techniques that can be used to help you identify the exact version of software that's running. Banner grabbing is where we intentionally get the system to generate something like an error message, like say an error for an error for a foy, file not found. And then by looking at the error message, we can see the exact version of the system is listed. So banner grabbing is where the system just straight up tells you the exact software. And as security professionals, we should make sure the systems are configured not to show this information. Fingerprinting is far more subtle. By either passively monitoring network traffic going to a system or actively sending if especially a few specially crafted packets, we can carefully evaluate the exact structure and the contents of packets. Different versions of systems will craft packets in subtly different ways, allowing us to fingerprint the exact version. So basically, we gather up the packets being sent by a system. We carefully analyze those packets, looking for little subtle telltale signs of exactly what version of software created those packets and sent them across the network. That's fingerprinting. When we run our scans, we need to be able to understand the results. Interp we need help interpreting them. And two instruments that we can use are CVEs and CVSS numbers. So let's go through those. And we'll start with CVE. When different vendors detect a vulnerability for the first time, they often give their own unique name, such as Heartbleed, to the vulnerability. Unfortunately, vendors often come up with their own competing names for the same vulnerability. The role of a CVE number, a common vulnerability and exposure number, is to give each vulnerability a unique but standardized name that every vendor will use. The CVSS, or Common Vulnerability Scoring System, is a standard for assessing the severity of a vulnerability, from zero, which means meh, no, no real issue here, all the way up to 10, which means everyone should be running and screaming because the end is nigh. So a 10 is obviously, a CVSS score of 10 is obviously very concerning. All right, final thing to define here, false positives versus false negatives. False positives occur when you receive an alert, but no incident is taking place. So you get an alert, but there's nothing actually bad happening. That's a false positive. A false negative is when you don't receive an alert, but an incident, something bad is happening. False positives can fatigue your security team, meaning they may not notice when an actual attack is taking place. So it's best to try and reduce false positives to try and minimize them. But we don't want to desensitize the system so much to the point where we are not getting alerts and we start to get false negatives. False negatives are truly dangerous. A false negative is where something bad is happening and you're not getting an alert. So we absolutely want to avoid false negatives. All right, there we go. That's an overview of vulnerability assessments and pen testing within domain four covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam.